Judgment Day, uh, of course, almost upon us for Everton, Leicester and Leeds. Indeed. Um, let me throw this at you, Simon, just in the passing. Will, uh, will either of those three clubs be away for long? Will any of those three clubs be away for long if and when they drop down? Or whoever drops down, will they come straight back up? Well, I, I mean, look, I made the case yesterday um, that I think the two teams that are going to go down um, are Leicester and Leeds, and I specifically was talking about Leeds, and I think there's no reason if they can clear up the confusion and the mess that's in their boardroom about decision-making that Leeds won't bounce back. And I think the same, most likely, of Leicester. So I, the answer to your question is it makes it a dull day in the championship because you're going to find two of the three sides in my view, and Southampton might be slightly more challenged because I'm not entirely inspired by the decision-making process of, of the new manager they're putting in, might be the two, uh, uh, the one of the three that doesn't come back up again. So the answer to your question is, yes, I think they can bounce both of these sides, yeah. whoever goes down, including Everton. Sure, we're looking at three days of playoff football. Uh, Coventry Luton, the big one in the championship playoff final uh, on Saturday. On Sunday, I'm going to be Wembley for each and every one of them. The League 2 playoff final, Carlisle against Stockport County. And then on Monday, and Wembley will be packed to the rafters for the old, uh, old Yorkshire affair Barnsley against Sheffield Wednesday I mean final day relegation battles uh, the playoffs this is a weekend like no other Stuart isn't it oh it's brilliant I, I can't wait I mean the relegation situation in the Premier League has been topsy-turvy all year teams have bounced in out of the Premier League if we think that it's going to be a straightforward affair at the bottom of the division, I think it's going to chop and change as the uh, 90 minutes prevail. Which way it will go, they all look as though they've got potential winnable games. Yes. Yeah. They're all at home. Yeah. Um, but your common sense says, well, Everton have got a two-point buffer, but they've got to win the game. Because, one. Uh, well, I would suggest that one of those teams with a better... Well, certainly Leicester have got a better goal difference. A draw won't be good enough for Everton because you won't rely on Leicester uh, not winning the game. But Everton have got Bournemouth at home. They've got to win it. They all look winnable. Do they win it? You would say yes, but I'll tell you what, there's a little bit of me nagging in the back of my mind suggesting we've not had clarity all year. Why is it that on the last day of the season we think all these threatened teams are going to all win? Yeah. Mm. Sorry to, to drag it up, Stu, but in 1993, Nottingham Forest... Uh, Brian Clough resigned after this after 18 years as manager yep what do you remember of it what did you have to do and what couldn't you do um, I think we knew we'd sold too many decent players over a, a period of time as in Keane Clough uh, Collymore you, uh, sorry Stan come after that uh, Des Walker left too many good players left and we knew from a long time out that we were doomed I think Internally, the players, the dressing room, we knew we were doomed, not just coming into the last day of the season. I think Sheffield United was the game that ended Sheffield up putting United. us down. Sheffield United, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We went to Ipswich away last game. Yeah. Sheffield United. Uh, and we just didn't have enough quality in our ranks to, to get results. And, you know, Brian had, had sort of lost his way a little bit, is probably the kindest way of saying it. Um, and, you know, we, we rightly got relegated. What was it? What was the atmosphere like in the dressing room at the end of that? We, it was dour then, but we knew, Jim. To be fair, that we were finished long before then. We knew a couple of months prior to that that, that we were done. Honestly, I mean, when, when that uh, typical Stuart Pierce, I have to say, because when that happened, you opted to stay, uh, and you captained for us to an instant return to the top flight as Division One runners up. But did everybody else share that sense of loyalty that you had? Uh, no, I think you've got to look at it individually or on what the club meant to me at the time. Um, I've got to say, Jim, the first thing that I'd done was pick the telephone up and, and ring Graham Taylor, who's the England manager. Bear in mind, I was the England captain at the time. And I said to him, a straightforward question, will this put in jeopardy my England career if I stay and not play in the Premier League? He said, no, it won't. You know, you're the captain of the team. As soon as he said that to me, I was happy to stay at Nottingham Forest with the loyalty that the fans had served me. And I've got to say, a new manager come in, Frank Clark come in and sold the club to me again. You know, he signed mm. Colin Cooper, he signed uh, Colin Moore that summer and the club just took off and got promoted again straight away. But if Taylor had said to you, Stuart, I've got to be honest, dropping down the division will affect your England captaincy and your England inclusion, would you have moved? Yes, 100%. 
nothing was going to stand in the way of a potential England cap and playing for my country because it's always been the pinnacle of my career. So I would never, ever have put that in jeopardy, even for Nottingham Forest. Why did I ever doubt that? <laughs> Why did I ever doubt that? But relegation in general, Stuart, many, many players this weekend are going to have that experience, like it or not. Um, how does it affect players? How deeply does it affect you? Uh, Did it affect you more deeply in the time you played to the time that these guys are doing it this weekend? I hope not, Jim. I, I, I hope that they'll be hurting because they've contributed to that club being relegated. Whether you like it or not, or whether they played really well in that season that they've been relegated, who knows? I've been relegated at non-league level. Fortunately, bounced back again and won the division um, that we were relegated to into the Southern League. I've been relegated with Nottingham Forest on a couple of occasions as well. And it, it hurts, make no mistake, especially if if you've got a mentality that says, look, the buck stops with me. I'm part and parcel of this. And bear yeah. in mind, I was a captain of Nottingham Forest on two occasions when we got relegated. But today, is there, to a degree among certain players, an attitude of, I'm all right, Jack, I'll be all right? I don't. I think it's irrelevant to whether it's modern day or whether it was yesteryear. I think there's certain players that get relegated and look around the dressing room and think it's someone else's fault, and they'll be all right because they'll get a move somewhere else or whatever. That's whether it's today or whether it was 50 years ago. It's all the same. You've got certain different characters within the dressing room. Some will take it personally and say, this is my responsibility, I need to do something about it. And some will say, thank you very much, I'm jumping off the ship. <laughs> of course, uh, Simon, the joys of the playoffs. Uh, we'll get to this very shortly. Yeah, You remember that game against uh, Charlton, did I say? Well, Charlton was a relegation, wasn't it? We got relegated in the last game of the season from the Premier League. Um, playoffs were something different, but right. Charlton, we, you know, in, we, when we got relegated, when I on um, Palace in two thousand and five, um, that was the, mo the the very thing that Stuart's describing um, in terms of the uh, you know the jostling for the positions. There was three or four sides that were. It was I think one of the few Sundays um, that you actually saw more than in fact three or four sides could all get relegated, and so you were watching the games, and it was I think called the ultimate survival Sunday. And I think when we went into that game, the big focus for us was we thought we'd win the game. We were more worried about what Fulham would do and the feeling that Fulham would not turn up against Norwich because there's nothing in that game for them. Yeah. And I remember Chris Coleman saying to Ian Dowie, don't worry about us, we'll do our job. Norwich had the opportunity to take it in their own hands, got beat six by Fulham. We had the destiny in our own hands. You know, we relegated ourselves. We were two one up. Well, that was it. You were two one up, mm. and you got yourself into that yep. really solid position. A seventy first minute penalty, I think, against Charlton. But Andy Johnson meant that yep. you were safe going into the final twenty minutes. Sorry, Simon. Then yep. this happened. Played towards the back post. Jonathan Fortune, the defender whose handball had given away the penalty at the other end, scores with a header now, and this, you sense, is vital. Is it still painful to hear that? Uh, no, because you know, you, you, you know, life goes on, doesn't it? But we had two opportunities. We played Southampton the previous week at home with Harry Redknapp in charge. I'd bought a player from Inter Milan, uh, Nicola Ventola, who was the wonder boy of Italian football that had come back from an injury. Nicola had injured himself in the first game of the season, didn't play all season, came back on the penultimate game against Southampton, scores a goal with his first touch. So we're 2-1 up and we're, we're away. And for some reason or another, with, with the last minute of the game, our goalkeeper decides to throw the ball out to Nicola, who doesn't come and meet it. Danny Hingerbottom comes through him, sends it to the back post and they equalise in the last minute. So that was 2-2. So we've done it to ourselves in that game. We go to Charlton... Uh, have nothing to play for besides a deep-seated distaste for Crystal Palace and their chairman <laughs> disliking me intensely. Who, you know, I had great, great delight in telling me afterwards. And they turned up and played in that game chart. Like they, and, and Danny Murphy describes it, doesn't he, about how they were, they were really wanting to beat Palace for no other reason than just send Palace down. But we again did it to ourselves. A goalkeeper came out like Cooperman, you know, <laughs> in his tracksuit bottoms, Gabor Corelli, missed it completely, and they score a goal. And you're watching it, you're going, I, I don't believe that just happens. We've take we've snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, and then you know magnanimous me makes a phone call to Jeremy Peace, which I wish I hadn't bothered with. <laughs> I, I tell you what, there's this myth in football that teams have got nothing to play for. 
you know, it, it doesn't work like that. And that's the beauty of English football, I think. Yeah, you know, I yeah. remember going to Sheffield Wednesday, I think the last day of the season, big run in charge there. We beat them 3 0 and relegated them. And people mm-hmm. think, well, Forest, mid table, nothing to play for. Don't work like that anymore. No, you got a job to do, go exactly out there and do that. it.